After the pandemic, my parents had some kind of aftermath that continues to affect them to this day. You see, my parents are an elderly couple who have always loved each other madly, and it seems like fate had brought them together in good and bad times, like when they were infected with the coronavirus in 2020. We feared the worst because they were just in their 70s, and everyone knows that the more advanced the age, the more complication the infections can have. The whole family tried to help, but their condition was somewhat serious. And I say that they're good and bad because if one got serious, the other seemed to follow. See, one time, mom started giving a headache that put her to bed for four days. Well, a day after this, father started having the same. With the same pain description, hmm, weird, right? We would think that those were exaggerations from him to not make my mom feel so bad, but when a doctor, a friend of the family, saw them, he saw that they both had a slightly bulging part of their head. Something really common with a headache, and although it was extremely rare for something like that to happen for two different people, they knew how to break the impossibilities. And well, time passed, months passed, and my siblings and I had corona too, and we got over it. Although my parents were able to come to it, the aftermath is still somewhat that affects us to this day. See, it's been a few years since then and things have not improved at all for my family. I would go as far as to say that they've gotten worse. But that's because of our family situation, see? We have a huge house inherited from my great-grandparents with ten bedrooms, four bathrooms, and a kitchen on each floor. Yeah, it's crazy. But out of my four siblings, only I had stayed in the house regularly. Or... At least that's what had happened until a while ago. I say this because my second sister came out of the blue to take care of my parents, and although it seems like it was out of the blue, I have my theories. My parents uh, relapsed recently. They started having aching bones and breathing problems, and they started talking bitterly last Christmas about how they were no longer getting better, and that the inevitable could happen at any time. Of course, we did not like them saying things like that, and we tried to tell them not to talk nonsense but they insisted. Then they started talking about inheritance, and that's when my sister arrived. They said that the inheritance would be mostly the house, and that they would try to leave it with us, at least with one of us. I have my husband, but we live two buildings away from theirs. We moved years ago to a small apartment, but I came back to check on them from time to time. They live on their own in that huge place, so they said that the house could be everybody's, but that they could leave it to whoever needed it most. That is, leave it in the sense of who would have the most authority there. And my sister Becca, well, she is quite a character. You see, Becca has been the outcast of all the siblings. Our other two brothers, the oldest and youngest, already have their homes and family. I'm the only one without children, and sometimes they have a hard time coming to visit and helping our parents. They can at least help us with medicine, but it's all down to my sister, who has suddenly taken a genuine interest in our parents... Yeah, right. She didn't put in much at the time, so the fact that she's now trying to redeem herself or something after the inheritance announcement is a bit curious, right? See, I talked this over with my older brother, but he says that I'm overreacting a bit. He says our parents would not leave the house to her, knowing what she's like. Becca is the most rebellious of all, the litter. She was in all kinds of trouble in her college days from getting drunk and ending up in another state to crashing into the mayor's son just because he, who was her teacher, did not pass her a pop quiz. Yeah, it's crazy, and now she, who was the target of all our parents nagging, comes like a little lamb to try to take care of them. It's really odd and suspicious. Besides, she would do it for a lot more seasons and... Since she is the only one of us who can't afford a house, her husband left her years ago. But it's her fault. Alcohol problems and whatnot. At least she did a good job raising her children alone. But that led to her ended up uh, renting out an apartment downtown, which is where she's been until now. Now, only her kids stay there while she takes care of our parents. But the problem starts when I found out some things that she's been saying behind our back. See, a couple days ago... She stayed in the house and woke up early to attend to our parents, who had been in bed for some time now. I woke up too, but just before I went into the room, I heard her talking about how none of the children would now attend to them, and that we would surely give the house the same treatment once they were no longer with us. Ah, there it is. 
Mystery solved, she just wants to be with my parents in their last days so she can take over the house. It's pathetic as hell, and I've discussed it with my husband, who is also outraged. I mean, all of us siblings can share the house, but I don't doubt that she, having the place, will not start remodeling and inviting lots of people to stay rent-free with us. That's something anybody can expect from her. And my parents can't be shaken with too much information, since they're very delicate. Rather, Becca is doing a very risky thing by telling our parents that their kids don't want to help her, because they can make their condition worse. If I've learned anything in all this time, it's that emotions can directly affect their symptoms. They seemed to improve slightly a few days ago, only when their grandchildren came to visit, and I feel that Becca knows this and is taking advantage of it. The situation at hand is delicate because our siblings can't be around forever, and I have to start working again so I won't be able to accompany them anymore. I'm considering telling the grandchildren to see if they can, but visiting your dying grandparents is not a very enjoyable activity to do every day. Anyways, I would like your advice, guys. I can't just tell my parents that everything Becca says is a lie because it would be setting off a war in the family. Same for my siblings, they're very temperamental and don't have the best relationship with Becca. If they ever find out that Becca is plotting this behind our backs, then it's true that our parents will go from zero to minus 100. And I know this because my mom once told me. A few years ago, when they were coming out of the virus, that she did not want us to fight because the family was the only thing that kept them going. I ask, how can one stand to hear something like that? I'm thinking of having more family get-togethers, thus shutting Becca up at her own game. I don't know, maybe Sundays, but doing that involves money, and frankly, we don't have that much because of my parents' situation. Plus, I take them to correct my students' homework on Sundays, another thing that I was also planning, but it's a meaner thing to say, is to make it so Becca can no longer be in the house with my parents. I don't know, get her a new job, and then she won't have any free time to come with my parents either, because I know she does it out of pure interest. When I talk to them, they feel like, um, distant. And it's precisely because of everything Becca's telling them. Guys, it just, uh, completely makes my blood boil. That she's turning our parents against us, altering their perception of their kids. She'll no longer be the misbehaving daughter, but, quote, the only one who took care of them when no one else would. This is not fair. Please, I would like some input on what I could do to change the situation in our favor. So we can all have the house equally, as in theory, it should be. What's up, everybody? So we have an inheritance drama today. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel for more daily videos. But first, before we hop into the first update, let's check out comment number one. Honestly, this whole story just sounds like jealousy and insecurity from OP. Becca might have been a mess in the past, but people can change. Instead of trying to bring the family together, the OP is just obsessed with painting her sister as a villain and plotting ways to get rid of her. They even admit that they want to get her a new job just to keep her away from their parents. That's not caring, that's just petty. You're just bitter that Becca's doing what you did not and now you're trying to sabotage her because you feel threatened. Instead of focusing on all this drama, maybe actually help your parents and stop worrying so much about who gets the house. You sound more interested in the inheritance than Becca does. Update number one. Hey guys, uh, I'm back. Well, what we feared has happened. My parents passed away a week ago and it's been a month since I last wrote my update. I'm writing this now because I feel I can write again without crying uh, my eyes out. I tried two days ago but simply could not. But the bitter feeling doesn't come only from that aspect. My parents' last days were somewhat torturous for the family, as Becca sewed a bone of contention between us. Our parents began to be distant from us, and our younger brother was even yelled at with what little strength they had. He was the one who visited them last, but that was to be expected since he had his work full on, and his youngest daughter had been going through some serious belly aches, besides the fact that he had some personal projects that involved a lot of his time. Juggling his schedule, uh, Becca was still throwing dirt on him with our parents, saying he did not care about their condition and that it could get worse. And indeed, by telling them this, it did get worse. I knew this because sometimes I would talk to them, asking them how they felt. And they would tell me that it was bad, that their souls hurt because their children were abandoning them. 
It was quite pathetic the way I tried to make them understand that this was not so, and I tried by all possible means to get the boys to go home, but it was simply too complicated. Worst of all, one day I arrived and some people were leaving the house. Lawyers. They had spent a few hours there, and when I asked what they wanted, my parents told me it was just for some papers. But Becca seemed too happy about it. More suspicion. I felt like it was to talk about the will issue and the way they changed it. I'll be seriously mad. We haven't been able to talk about it, because first we've been organizing all the funeral stuff. It was kind of sudden, and we had to move a lot of money and contacts around to get everything in order. And secondly, because we have not been in the mood for anything, and that has us pretty much shut down. The only thing that makes me feel moderately happy and at the same time sad is that my parents left together almost at the same time. First, it was my mom, and two days later, my dad followed her. I'd say it was the heartbreak that put him out, and at the time, Becca did not interfere as he was too sad to say anything. They both left this world peacefully, and the house, it felt empty. From the first moments, and... I've heard some comments from Becca saying that she would, quote, take some things from here to there, meaning that she won't just take a single room. Better to say she'll be the ruler of the whole property. You guys recommended getting lawyers anyway, so that'll be, uh, well, fixed. But at this point, we don't know what could have happened. We have the property distribution of the will meeting in a week, and we finally will know what happened there. But I feel like we already know the answer. If she ever does anything to the house, taking it away from us, rest assured that I will have no qualms about getting good lawyers to get us that home. A friend told me that it could be appealed uh, because of our parents' condition, that they were not in their right mental state to make sensible decisions, so after a certain time, their legal opinions would be worthless. So we could be left with the ones they wrote before when they were in full use of their mental capacities. But I'll wait and see. I'll give you a new update in a week to tell you how the inheritance turned out. And if we will finally have a house where we can fall asleep occasionally. Update number two. Hey guys, so it's actually been a month since reading of the will. Like 40 days since my last update and I must say that everything I feared could happen happened. Becca got the house. It read in the will that the house would end up going to the one who was in the most bitter time. And that ended up being Becca. It was more of a de facto thing, but we could not do anything about it. Many in the comment section told me that we should have done more, but I ask you, how could we have left our jobs to focus on our parents? It was precisely for them that we were working so hard, and it was Becca who was taking advantage of the situation. I have a pet peeve that has been building up for a few days now, and I decided to pick up these updates because of what I just found out. It turns out that shortly after our parents passed, Becca started advertising in her close circle, saying that rooms in the large communal house could be rented as if it were a hotel. My older brother tells me that the other day he went to visit her and found at least two families in there, leaving him confused. When he spoke to Becca, she told him that she was trying to generate extra money. But my brother told her that she should check with the rest of the family first. Her response was annoying to us all, saying that since she was the one with the papers for the house, she might as well do whatever she pleases. She hasn't even bothered to get a new job with the new spare time she has after our parents' passing. Her kids moved into the house too, and they're always inviting their friends to stay for parties. There have been about four barbecues in our backyard, and one of them almost ended up setting the house ablaze. She doesn't seem to mind too much for us. But the th second thing happened. The first and most obvious is that we resent the fact that they're defiling the house we grew up in and turning it into some kind of club. The second and more sensitive is that, as I said at the beginning, not even two months have passed since the funeral, and already Becca and her children have transformed everything to suit their convenience. Do they not know what it is to mourn? Now, it seems more obvious than ever that Becca helped our parents just for convenience, and who will we complain to? They are already dead, so we won't be able to do anything about it. In the comments, I was also told about lawyers, and they were even hired, but couldn't do much. The will has to be fully respected whether we want it to or not, and Becca will still have that place. Update number three. 
Hey guys, I just want to say, long time no see. Exactly one year since I last wrote to you, and things have been quite busy. Movies, birthdays, a Christmas that for the first time we decided to spend each one at home. All because of Becca. You know, my sister who took over the family home. Well, guys, I'm finally writing you now to keep you updated on the situation. Becca had the house all this time, and she's messed it up, man, plain and simple. Every time we drive by the front of the place, we can see the yard turned into a pigsty. With a tree or two down and the paint cracking, it's as if the place has been vandalized from the inside out, but that's not the reason I'm writing this. That just keeps you up to date. We found out recently that Becca's been suffering from an illness for a few days now, and has been in a very bad health. We don't know for sure what it is, but we know that it has to be something strong, no longer a simple virus. She's been suffering from uh, lots of back pain, stomach, and joint pains, besides the fever and tremors, and has to be in bed at all time. She needs constant help with the simplest of daily tasks, something that even her children consider very annoying. She's gotten to the point of even wanting to seek our help, and that's the crux of the matter. My husband recently told me that one of Becca's children wrote to him telling him that, with all the sadness in the world, they could help them take care of her, as she was becoming annoying to them. Annoying? They couldn't say that it was hard or laborious or that if they didn't help with their time and obligations, they just want help to get rid of her. Which ironically is a bit reminiscent of my parents' situation. I mean, oh yeah, now the tables have turned. And Becca needs our help. But I'll tell you something, I've been talking about it with my siblings in a family chit-chat. It's a group that we have without Becca. And we came to the bitter conclusion that maybe this illness came after this disgusting lifestyle that she was leading. It's most likely because Becca never knew how to be neat and keep her own room clean. Now, imagine a house that big. It was only a matter of time before this happened. And if I could throw one more tidbit of information at you guys. A couple of months ago, I ran into one of Becca's old friends. One I never liked, but whenever I saw her, we always said hello. A bit hypocritical of me, I know, and... She told me some interesting things regarding Becca's brothel. She told me that it had been a long, long time since she had stayed there for a lot of reasons. One of them was, of course, hygiene. Another was that Becca began to bring in strangers, and that generated distrust in her friends. The house gradually deteriorated, and it got to a point where you could not live there. She tells me what uh, the conditions were like the last time we went, and it was simply deplorable. Clogged faucets, overdue utility bills, the floor almost always dirty, and the refrigerator with a nauseating odor. Now, it pained me to imagine my childhood home in that condition, and I thought I would never see it like that again. All because of selfishness and self-interest, I did not tell my siblings about this because they have let the matter pass, and because surely when they found out, they'll do something about it. I'm not in the mood for more conflicts. If she feels weak, well, too bad. Maybe it's a punishment for everything she did. Update number four, nine days later. Becca's not doing well at all, but as ugly as it sounds, the family could not care less. After my previous update, we tried to talk to her, but it was very turbulent of a conversation. So much so that even her children, kids, who just kept complaining about everything, started to have a little more reason, telling their mother that this wasn't the time for egos or show-offs. This is because Becca said that maybe we were only going to help her on the condition that she would give the house back. Which was uh, what many of you told me in the comment as if it made full circle with what happened with my parents, but Becca did not accept. She would rather die than be with us helping her. I mean, does it look very serving of us to want to help her because of that? We would do it because she's our sister, but after she got into that nonsense, we just flat out said no. And that can't hurt her any worse, right? Because if you were to see her, it's like seeing a living corpse. Although her condition is relatively better than that of our parents at the time, the truth is that she's still not doing well and seems to be getting more pale, almost gray, thin with dark circles under her eyes that would make her look like a raccoon. If she doesn't start taking care of herself, there will surely be no more Becca for the world soon. If I can give one more recommendation to all you readers, it's to put your interest in pride aside. She can't expect us to help her without her reconsidering and proving the home, because we are not just saying this for her sake, but to recover the chaos that she achieved. 
but if we say that we will no longer help her with it, then let her refrain from the consequences. Her children told us to reconsider, but we told them that until she is reconsidering, unfortunately, there was not much that we could do. We are concerned about this, the bills that the house have, and, well, they're stopped being paid for, and they may, if things continue as they are, take the house away from her, losing the opportunity for all of us to keep our home. This small bit of revenge comes with a very high price tag, and sometimes we wonder if it's even worth it. Final Updates My advice, don't let pride get to your head and do things for love. This story has a confusing outcome as Becca ended up being admitted first and after she had a terrible coughing fit that made her spit up blood. That was a week and a half after my last note and I'm writing this three months later. She tore a lung and there was no one in the house to help her. She smoked in college and apparently that's all it took. Her children did not attend to her as they should have and she alone had to do what she could do to call an ambulance still coughing up blood. They kind of disregarded from her and disengaged after I said some little things out loud. I said in a family chat that we were going to get rid of all the burden of the family home and what that entailed meaning Becca. And those words must have resonated with everyone including Becca's children. They began to leave her alone and she got angrier and angrier. When this happened, she took the time to reflect. I don't think that she's in a serious, life-threatening condition, but I do feel that she could have avoided that by just apologizing. That's when we began implementing a new strategy. We invaded the house. It wasn't an easy thing to do, but Becca was no longer in a position to claim us. The whole family, including some of our cousins, agreed to clean up and restore the inside and outside of the place, fixing everything that Becca did. Needless to say, we had to get paint, cement, and even ceramics. I think that's probably why Becca didn't say anything, because she knew that we were going to fix the mess that she made, so she would not have to deal with it again. She certainly learned her lesson the hard way. See, she's on the mend, but she can't walk without a cane. And to make matters worse, it's hard for her to breathe. On top of that, she had to have some surgeries on her nose, which left her with some unfortunate scarring in several parts of her body. It was a pretty delicate medical process, and even so, I feel like taking her home away from her has been the biggest punishment of all. On top of that, she starts complaining about all the work that we're doing on the old house. After a meeting with her lawyers and children, we came to an agreement. Because of her condition, she could not keep the house in order, so the property went to her eldest child. He agreed to let us basically rebuild it from scratch and use some of Becca's money to do it. My husband and I have decided to move once everything is done. We'll consider selling the apartment so we can buy a more affordable car and the rest take a trip to Europe for a few days. Becca's kids have told us that she's considered kicking us out of the house, but it's so embarrassing that she's unable to do so, which means we can now have the house in peace. This will bring back the family reunions that we had before. And although we have to tell all the former tenants that the place is no longer available, we prefer that to deal with bitter situations. I hope mom and dad are proud that the family is a little closer once again.